This is Bishop John Durfler of the Diocese of Marquette. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, in light of the upcoming elections in the United States, I am beginning a three-part series of reflections on our responsibility to vote and participate in the public square. I am not telling you how to vote, nor am I supporting any political party or candidate. Rather, I'm speaking to moral principles that we are called to embrace, and it is your responsibility to consider prayerfully how to vote in light of these principles. In doing so, we are not imposing our Catholic faith on others. The moral principles that I will be discussing are rooted in basic truths about the human person. Thus, they are applicable to everyone. Given space considerations, I will not be able to treat every issue in detail. Instead, I intend to provide a summary. For a more complete treatment, see the document of the U.S. bishops entitled, Forming Consciences for Faithful Citizenship. In this message, I would like to reflect on four basic principles of Catholic social teaching to be applied to public life. In the second message, I will examine the obligation to do good. In the third message, I will treat the necessity of avoiding evil. All public policy should embody four fundamental principles. The dignity of every human person, the common good, and subsidiarity and solidarity. The dignity of the human person. Each and every human being, from the moment of conception to natural death, is endowed with incomparable dignity. It is fundamental for the government to respect each person's dignity and the inalienable rights that are rooted in it, such as the right to life. Threats to the dignity of the human person include, but are not limited to, abortion, euthanasia, assisted suicide, human cloning, in vitro fertilization, the destruction of human embryos for research, unjust war, terrorism, genocide, attacks against non-combatants, torture, racism, and human trafficking. Moreover, respect for the dignity of the human person urges us to overcome poverty and suffering. The common good. The common good is the sum total of social conditions which allow people, either as groups or individuals, to reach their fulfillment more fully and more easily. Human fulfillment should not be viewed merely in a material or economic sense. Human flourishing entails living a life of virtue and excellence. The common good consists of three essential elements. Respect for and promotion of the fundamental rights of the person. Prosperity or the development of the spiritual and temporal goods of society. The peace and security of the group and its members. Since the human person reaches fulfillment not by himself, but rather by living with others and for others, all people have a responsibility for promoting the common good. Moreover, the promotion of the common good is the reason for the existence of the state. Thus, in prayerfully discerning for whom to vote, we should ask how well the candidate's policies promote the common good. Does the candidate strive to safeguard basic human rights? Is a right to life and religious liberty respected? Is the prosperity and development of society fostered so that people can obtain food, housing, education, employment, and health care? Subsidiarity. The principle of subsidiarity highlights the importance of small and local groups in society, of which the family has the pride of place. According to the principle of subsidiarity, there is a preference to address matters on as local a level as possible and avoid over-centralization and the undue control by higher levels of government. Higher levels of government do have responsibility to act, however, 
when the common good cannot be adequately fostered on the local level. Yet when higher level government institutions act, it should be with the attitude of help, support, and promotion of the more local institutions, not strive to substitute them. Thus, in prayerfully discerning for whom to vote, we should ask how well the candidate's policies respect the principle of subsidiarity. Does the candidate promote big government control or instead respect smaller and more local levels of government and other smaller groups in society? Solidarity. The principle of solidarity highlights the fundamental unity we have with one another, our social nature, and the equal rights and dignity of every human person. Solidarity calls us to reach out to the marginalized, welcome the stranger among us, including immigrants, and promote peace. It underscores the preferential option for the poor and prompts us to share our goods with one another. In light of our solidarity with one another, we recognize that we are not self-sufficient individuals. We must depend on each other, and thus we all have a debt to society. Thus, in prayerfully discerning for whom to vote, we should ask how well the candidate's policies respect the principle of solidarity. Does the candidate foster the obligations that each individual and society as a whole have to care for the needs of all? The principles of solidarity and subsidiarity are two sides of a coin. Unfortunately, there is a tendency to emphasize one to the neglect of the other. Subsidiarity without solidarity can degenerate into isolated groups dominated by self-interest without concern for the common good of society as a whole. Solidarity without subsidiarity can degenerate into a welfare state that stifles personal responsibility and local initiative. In other words, we should strive for a balance. In the next two messages, we will reflect on the obligation to do good and avoid evil. These reflections will also help us to discern that even though all the issues are important, they do not all have the same weight. This is Bishop John Durfler of the Diocese of Marquette.